Hey guys, I'm trying to figure out how I get all this stuff up in the tree. Come on out. I'm going to pack this thing up and set it up in the tree. Hey guys, welcome back to Frame Your Game. I wanted to bring you up here today to kind of give you some insight on how I set up my stand when I'm getting ready to film my own hunt. Uh, one thing that you'll notice that was already here is a stand, camera arm, accessory hook, bow hook, and on the back side that you can't see is a tree step. Uh, and I'll show you what those are all for. <laughs> so. I'll climb the tree, always with safety equipment, uh, lifeline. I'll usually have a, uh, a tree, uh, a tree harness strap up here. Uh, I'll get up with the lifeline, reclip into that, unclip my lifeline, I'm always attached. So the first thing I do so get my pack off. Unclip my camera arm. Make sure my bubble's level. Usually, I like to turn my pack around. From here, get my camera out. And I hook that up and get it out of the way. The tree arm will keep that safe as you're getting everything set up. Let it lock in place. Get your mic set up. I'm running a Rode NTG1 and a Sony FS700. The nice thing about this FS700 is the simple fact that you can run 240 frames per second in full HD. Uh, it's a little overkill for most of you out there, uh, but what I really like about it uh, is the fact that I have the flexibility to do whatever I want. Um, they came out with a fantastic lens, uh, Sony that is, uh, in a 70 to 200 power zoom. The great thing about the power zoom is I can control everything with the VZ Rock um, zoom, uh, control. This gives me zoom in and out. It gives me power on, power off, focus assist if I need it. Um, and uh, I've just, I, I really, really, really like the way this thing is set up. I uh, also have a couple variable NDs um, from 0 to uh, 164th ND. So um, it gives you a lot of, a lot of different options. Uh, I usually have a Rode um, uh, wireless lav mic port here, um, and I wear the pack and the lav on my uh, on my lapel. So we get this out of the way. 
You also notice that I have a control here on the handle. What this is, is for my GoPro. And I use that as a third angle. So I've got a great little gadget for you if you don't have one already, it's called the Clip Shot. What this little device does is it gives you the ability to put it onto a, an accessory bow hook, um, a pole in your blind, um, a tree limb, and give you uh, an extra little mounting point. This thing, when it's, uh, when it's loosened, it can go just about in any direction that you need. Um, tighten it back up, and you're in business. So now we've got our third angle set up. May need to adjust it a little bit, but we're good to go. I can turn it on and off from here. I can start and stop record. So when, I, when a deer comes in, the only thing I have to do is grab my handle here record uh, after i turn the on button on everything pops up i hit record i hit power on here everything pops up i get my uh my information that pops up on my screen here i know i'm ready to record i hit record i've got this camera and this camera going just like that additionally I have a, uh, a secondary camera that I always bring with me for hero shots and whatnot. If you uh, you want to show off your your uh, your kill at the end of the end of the day, or you want to get some B-roll shots of some, uh, some say the sun coming through these leaves, so you get some really cool shots. Especially if you want to run like a 1.8 um, macro or a 1.8 or 1.2 um, really shallow depth of field lens which you can't get uh, out of this power zoom, uh, you have that ability. And you also don't have to keep moving this big camera around all over the place. Um, you can usually just hand, held, hand hold those shots. Um, you wanna bring a slider out with you. There's, there's multiple ways you can go about this, but this usually stays in my bag unless I wanna kinda of take some B-roll shots and, and kinda of be stealthy about it. It also, uh, with a little uh, plate that I have. Uh, I've got the same ball head plate attached to a 501 PL plate uh, via an adapter. So I can put this on here. I can take this block off here quickly, put it back in my bag, and run this on my tripod uh, in a matter of seconds. And put it down in my studio. I have the same ball head in my studio. I can I can run that on there. It's completely plug and play. I have the same mount on my slider. I have the same mount on my jib boom. All of this uh, making things really quick and easy. I got two kids, uh, a wife that um, I do like to hang out with, um, and I don't have that much time. If I have a couple hours, that's that's usually max for doing a project. So I need to be able to get in and out uh, and, and things set up really, really quick so I can get on to doing the content. So after I get my camera set up, I usually have a couple extra things. Maybe I have an extra jacket, but I usually have a fanny pack um, that allows me to get all my hunting gear out in, in ready um, very, very quick. I might have an extra set of gloves, a uh, face mask, um, uh, my release. Uh, I may have um, an extra hat. Say it's uh, early season and I know I'm gonna sweat going in. Um, so all those quick little things that I need, uh, I know I'm gonna need when I get in the tree, I put in my fanny pack. I also bring my binos out uh, and my rangefinder. I run these with a lock outdoors bino strap. Um, and what's kind of neat is I run my rangefinder in my pocket. Uh, and then with, and my hunting pants usually have a, a little bit more, a little bit more uh, oomph. 
And the way this is set up, this strap can run through uh, my bino strap, or my rangefinder strap, and I've got my binos right there and easily accessible. I used to use the over the shoulder, uh, kind of keep it on your chest bino straps, but the thing is, is when you've got all this gear, you're gonna be hot going in, so you're not going to carry, uh, you're not gonna wear all your gear in typically, especially if you're worried about your scent. So this allows me to quickly get out of this strap, put a jacket on, zip it up, or take one off for that matter even, and then I'm right back in my binos. So if you're a guy that really likes binos all the time, really look into this. Um, I always thought it was kind of silly watching these guys fling them over their shoulders like this, but um, after giving them a shot, I, I realized it really, really is fantastic. So once I've got that all set, everything gets zipped back up um, in the Badlands cameraman pack. Uh, and I'm sure you saw as I was walking in, this is a absolutely fantastic pack. Um, it's got plenty of storage, plenty of organization, uh, and it also has this cool little uh, DSLR pouch. So I can keep my DSLR both handy and uh, and safe uh, from everything else banging around in my pack. Um, if you don't have one, if, uh, if you're using a regular uh, backpack, it's fine. Uh, but as you acquire more gear, you're going to need to organize it uh, and keep it safe because uh, gar almost guaranteed uh, as you get more gear, you're going to get more expensive gear. Readily accessible, I usually keep a water bottle, uh, a couple extra batteries uh, in the, uh, the quick pockets uh, that are right here. Um, and again, it's just trying to limit movement. Lastly, to round out the video assortment, I'm going to attack the cam on my stabilizer. This just gives me a backup for, say I turn this on, I got to wait five minutes for that deer to come in and all of a sudden my battery goes dead. Um, and then I have a tactic cam selfie on the other side of my bow. Uh, that gives me just another, ex you know, an extra angle. So I'm in my tree. I've got my bow hung up. Everything's good. I look up. Oh, there's a deer coming. Okay. So what do we have to do? We have to turn on the camera. Turn on the GoPro. Wait for everything to set up. Hit record. Record. I'm then recording here, and I'm recording on my third angle. I come over here, I hit on, on. Once those buzz, I'm recording. I'm ready to go. So from then, I've got my deer coming in, and all I have to do is get him in frame, Note that I can zoom in and zoom out whenever I want. Stand up, draw, make the shot, and I'm right back in the camera for them running away. Going and back. I've got everything right here in my hands. Now you'll notice that I have the camera on my right side. Um, it's very, very important for right-hand shooter because uh, what you don't want to do is if you shoot with a wrist strap like this Lock Outdoors uh, Chubby that I have um, and you have gloves, it's really, really difficult to move with this hand. A, this is your dominant hand, most likely, uh, and all you have is your release. And I usually shoot a handheld release, so the nice thing is, is I can be off, on, off, on, really quick and get right back in and make my shot. So I hope by kind of giving you some tips and pointers about 
how I set up my tree, uh, hopefully it'll help you opening morning when you say, you know what, this is the year I'm gonna get one on film. And you get up there in the dark and you just don't have a clue where anything is. Uh, you fumble around, you make too much noise. Um, this is a setup that, that I've been using for a long time. When I'm not explaining things, I can get this in, uh, in the tree set up and out of the tree uh, and packed back up in my bag uh, in usually less than three to four minutes. So um, getting in and getting out as, as stealthy as possible, as quiet as possible, um, and as quick as possible um, is the name of the game. You don't want to work up a sweat. You don't want to make a lot of noise. Um, what you want to do is get a big buck down and get it on camera. Um, we'll review a little bit more in depth all the camera gear that I have, um, all the camera that I went through uh, here coming up, uh, probably studio segments. Um, but hopefully this helps you as you go out and you're trying to determine what I need to videotape my own hunts. So stay with us and frame your game. Uh, we'll be back for another episode pretty soon.